Physical Trap, a Saboteur build, uses Seismic and Exsanguinate traps to destroy absolutely everything in seconds and practically humiliate most of the bosses of Path of Exile, making them go rethink their lives, hanging their heads in shame. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I'm your host Jaro. Today I'd like to present to you my version of an extremely popular Physical Trapper build. It is a little bit slower at map clearing speed than my Val Arc Witch, at least arguably and at least in my experience, but it is much, much faster and vastly better at killing bosses than pretty much any other build in my collection. So in this video I will tell you how to build one of these for your own amusement. The chapters of this video are on the screen right now. So if you are impatient, please don't feel bad and use the video timeline markers or the timestamp links in the description below. If you would like to show your signs of appreciation and if you like this build, please like the video and subscribe for more. Physical Trapper appears to be the most popular and powerful boss killer build in Scourge League 316. It dishes out absolutely ridiculous amounts of damage with some investment into gear, but it shines even without any particularly notable pieces. I would not call it most beginner-friendly build, but once you've learned a thing or two about Path of Exile builds by following something a lot more straightforward, such as Arc Witch build or Toxic Rain Raider build, something like that, then there is no reason why you can't play Physical Trapper as a league starter. The main reason why I would not call it the most beginner-friendly is because you don't get just one basic skill gem and stick to it pretty much through the whole game. Here you start with elemental damage traps, support them with something even less obvious at first, while you get to somewhere around Sun encampment and then decide to respec to physical damage versus your initial direction through elemental focus tree skill nodes. As always, this guide should help, and I am trying to simplify the journey a lot of other creators who advertise physical trapper build versions to you here on YouTube are sharing. This build is inspired and influenced by at least a couple of different seismic saboteur builds from the creators who I respect greatly and whose videos I will link in the description below if you would like to get access to the source material, so to speak. Passive skill tree section of this video will show you how to progress your character through the early campaign acts and beyond, but I will keep it very very simple and therefore I will recommend to you that you follow the physical damage boosting path straight away, rather than do what the other builds and other guides of similar seismic saboteur builds tell you, because they all tell you to first go far off into elemental damage boosting nodes and then you kinda are stuck needing to retrace your steps quite massively, investing dozens of orbs of regret to get to your intended physical damage tree. Instead, I recommend that you start straight away using Stormblast Mine with elemental and lightning damage support as you level through the early game acts while progressing your passive skill tree with your intended physical damage boosting build in mind. Sure, yes, you will lose a lot of early game damage, but in my opinion this will not stop you massively and you will still get enough power to kill normal Izaro, let's say, during your first Ascendancy Labyrinth at level 33 to get Pyromaniac Ascendancy skill node, which will allow you to switch to Exsanguinate traps and turn you into a proper physical trapper as soon as you reliably can start recovering your life as you throw your traps around. We'll talk about this more in a few minutes. Exsanguinate kinda sucks before you get to that point because it costs life, even though there are some mastery nodes that help you recover life for each trap triggered by your enemies. It could allow you to get by before you get Pyromaniac but it probably won't be very enjoyable, so you better wait. Then you add Seismic Trap to your arsenal as soon as it becomes available to you, especially since you will be boosting your physical damage all along. But keep in mind that while Seismic Trap does a lot of damage, it only allows up to 4 traps to be dropped and at one time. 
so it won't be your go-to map clearing method. This is where Stormblast Mine, Lightning Trap and later Exsanguinate, as we just discussed, become very, very handy. Gems and gear I use are laid out on the screen for you right now, which hopefully will make things a bit easier for you to follow. The centerpiece here obviously is the intentionally six-linked seismic trap setup. It was six-linked for me while I was using tabular rasa robe, but had to be dropped by one gem down to five link once I got my tinker skin on. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So this starts as storm blast mine or lightning trap with some elemental and lightning damage support which we will then swap out for physical damage boosting gems that are shown on the screen right now and that swap will happen for you probably around level 35 40 range depending on how comfortable you felt to complete that first ascendancy labyrinth which is uh, has mobs of around level 33 and that is when you will take your first saboteur ascendancy pyromaniac node that makes all the difference as soon as we can use exsanguinate trap we will make use of deer stalker boots that have built-in trap support if you don't have deer stalker boots you would need to use something else and obviously lose one socket to put towards explicit trap support gem instead of something more useful I always play with cast when damage taken support that I keep as a gem at level 1. It is linked to the Immortal Call gem that can't be higher than level 3. And the other couple of gems just increase duration and slow the enemies, enemies at the point of impact. Arcanist brand setup is not exactly optimal, but it is there to boost single tar target damage on bosses. And for the movement I use unsurprisingly Withering Step for phasing and flame dash because flame dash is just amazing for all the important auras i am only running two determination and grace no no pride or skitterbots yes i tried those and concluded that survivability wins here and is a lot more important than a bit of extra damage that can be squeezed out through other means including by staying alive for a bit longer now on to notable gear pieces, some of which I've already mentioned. You need to obviously invest into boosting your trap damage, evasion for survivability and physical damage wherever you can. So I would recommend that you search the community market websites for gear, usually daggers, with at least plus one to all of your physical damage gems. This massively boosts your damage output and the pinnacle of this mountain would be having two called iron point daggers equipped which would both add plus three to your physical skill gems and hopefully a bunch of other beneficial effects such as increased global physical damage or critical strike chance if you're lucky i've leveled the whole way with tabula rasa simple robe and a couple of yellow plus one physical skill gem daggers and then upgraded to called iron points both of which cost me together 20 chaos orbs 10 each which might be a little bit expensive for some of you, but this is for end game, so you kind of don't need to aim for that straight away and you don't need to worry about it. And then I use Tinker Skin as a chest piece that boosts my trap performance much further. I unfortunately only have a five linked socket Tinker Skin, but it was self found, so I didn't have to buy it and I was happy that I didn't need to fork out just more currency to buy a six linked one. It works fine for me so far. Passive skill tree is best viewed using Path of Building Community Fork free software. And the link to my full build is in the description of the video as always. But if you are not on PC and don't have access to Path of Building, no worries my friend, please pause the video right now, take the screenshot and follow the numbers as a general vector for your leveling direction. So as you level up, you go first towards the cluster marked as 1. Then you go towards the cluster mark test too, and so on and so forth. It's very simple. Description of the video also contains information about what masteries I have taken. So take a look at that. Same story goes with the ascendancy, similar to passive skill tree. Take a look at the screenshot with numbers indicating the skills that you need to take first, second, third, and fourth. If you're really into end game grind, 
as not many of the builds presented to you by me actually show the fourth ascendancy node taken because I move on to other builds typically. You need to ascend as Shadow Saboteur and the first node that you would take is Pyromaniac that would give you substantial amount of life back as soon as you detonate your traps. Since we clear maps with Exsanguinate, it costs us life and it is essential for us to get this life back. The whole build pretty much doesn't work very well without this node being taken, in my opinion. Second Ascendancy notable that you would take would be Born in the Shadows. That's right, not the nodes boosting damage, but the one beefing up your defenses further. And this time around, we're going to be blinding the closest enemies. Remember the Golden Gyro rule. Dead damage dealer deals no damage. This time around for Pantheon Gods, I'm actually going to take Lunaris to reduce damage from multiple enemies that I'm surrounded by. Bosses are usually the risk for some other builds like Arkwitch, but not for this one. And for the Minor God, I am pretty much always picking Ralakesh to reduce the possibility and effects of bleeding. Now on to pros and cons. What are the pros? Well, obviously insane damage output. As soon as you have taken the Pyromaniac node, built up your passive skill tree a bit and switch to using physical traps away from your early game leveling with elemental damage traps and other skills. Probably the best and almost instant damage output on the bosses. You lay down the traps, boss activates, traps detonate and boss is dead. That's how typically it works. There is just nothing else like it in Path of Exile that I came across. What are the cons of the build? Well, it's a little slow start for the build due to us having to rely on the skills that we are actually not planning to use or support in any way from about Act 3-4 of the campaign as we need to switch to using physical trap damage output at that point. This makes the feeling of early leveling quite slower and even I would say maybe a bit disjointed from the rest of the gameplay that picks up massively past that early hiccup point I must add. Another con is that this build, for it to work properly and give you satisfying amounts of end game friendly damage, you do need to invest a little bit of Chaos Orbs into it. It's not free. Namely, you'd notice a massive increase in damage output and fun if you buy at least one Cold Iron Point Dagger for end game and something like Tinker Skin Chest with Deer Stalker Boots. So that's at least three items that you kinda need for this build for it to more or less shine. So if we're being kind of giving it a very, very rough assessment here, at the moment of recording of this video, this setup would cost you at least 15 Chaos Orbs. And this is all that I wanted to tell you about today, my friends. Physical Trapper Saboteur build might not be as trivial as some others that I've produced uh, the guides for on my channel, as um, I generally steer towards easy and very beginner-friendly builds. This one is just too powerful and too much fun, if done right, to ignore though. And there is kind of no reason why you can't build one of your own even without min-maxing it too much and kind of get frustrated from not understanding what those numerous PoE experts are talking about in their own guides, describing their high-end builds for their maxed out level 95 and level 100 characters. You can. In my opinion, enjoy this build way, way before that point in time, and I hope that I've delivered the message to you today loud and clear. See you next time, and thank you for watching.